So in this video, we're going to be doing some AMD versus Intel. Specifically, we have two machines here. First is the Intel Nook 13 Pro with an i7-1360P with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory coming in about $1,000. Then here we have the Geekom AS6, which is basically a spec'd out Asus PN53. This one has the Ryzen 9 6900HX with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. This one comes in about $800 and with the Ryzen 7000 series starting to hit the market, we should start to see prices drop even further. Now, I've covered the Nook in its own dedicated video, so I won't be going into too many specifics on the IO in my personal experience, but I will link to that video down below. Since I have not covered the AS6, let's take a quick look at some of the hardware. Now, first, I must note Geekom sent over both of these devices and sponsored this video, as they are an Intel Nook distributor store and they have their own branded store. And if you're interested in picking up a mini PC, it's a good place to do so, and there will be some promo codes down below. So onto the front, we have our audio out, USB 4 type C2, USB 3.2 Gen 1s, and our power button. And we can see confirmation here that it is hardware powered by Asus. We have two in-tank vents on the side, as well as the outtake on the back. The IO on the back is a, a quite interesting layout, but decent regardless. Two HDMI 2.1, a single display port 1.4. We have three more USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports right under an additional USB 4 type C. Besides that, we have a 2.5 gigabit LAN, which is very nice and our DC in. Breaking into this computer is the same as most, as we'll just need to unscrew the screws on the bottom. This one you do need to be a little more careful with because there is a motherboard and a daughter board in there. So when you separate it, you'll see that here and you can see some easily accessible RAM as well as an additional place to put an NVMe SSD. So now that we highlighted the AMD machine, how do these compare? So it's gonna be no question for general daily use running web browsers and most applications on both of these machines is a great smooth and snappy experience and actually seeing the difference in general use is essentially unidentifiable. Where we do see some major differences is within the benchmarking and gaming. Starting with Geekbench, I ran the test on both the AMD and Intel machine, and in this case, the Intel machine with the i7-1360P did score a little bit better on single core score with about a 400 point lead and a lead of about also 400 points on the multi-core scores. I will link to these results down below if you want to see some of the specifics. Going into Nova Bench in a system-wide test, we can see AMD taking a slight advantage here at 2447 versus Intel's 2407, and this bump is primarily due to the difference in RAM speeds from DDR4 to DDR5. We can see just under a 5000 megabit per second difference in the RAM speed, and they both have the same SSD, but even with that, the SSD speed on the AMD machine is just a little bit faster. And then for the next benchmark, we ran Cinebench. This was another AMD victory, scoring right about a thousand points above the Intel machine. This was on the multi-core 10 minute stress test. And then moving on to something a little lighter, both of them in Microsoft Edge, the Basemark web web browser benchmarking tool, gave a slight advantage to the AMD machine of about 100 points. Now, so far, the only Intel win was the CPU only test. When it comes to general system tests, it seems like an AMD is going to be in the lead and that holds true with gaming as well. Starting off in Splitgate, this is one of my favorite tests for these types of machines because Splitgate is a pretty easy game to run. And if a machine does seem to struggle with Splitgate, it's probably not a good gaming machine. Running it at 1080p, the AMD machine was kind of all over the place, but in a good way, anywhere from 100 to 150 frames per second, kind of averaging at about 120. For this one, the CPU temp was sitting about 75 degrees Celsius, which was significantly cooler than the Intel machine sitting at 90 degrees Celsius. This one in a 1080p running about 70 to 80 frames per second. Bumping up the resolution to 1440p, we saw high 70s to 80s on the AMD machine for frame rates and on the Intel machine, it was sitting in the 40s. So next up, I loaded up Forza in 1080p low on the AMD machine. We were locked in at a steady 60 frames per second with nearly no drops, and the Intel machine was hovering in the mid 30s. Moving on to a game that's a little more graphically intensive, we have Ghost Recon. Running this game at 1080p low, we saw frames from the 30s to 40s on the AMD machine, definitely playable, but I can't really say the same for the Intel machine where we saw frames sitting right about 
15 frames per second. And finally, the last game I tested out was Call of Duty 1080p Low. This one was fairly neck and neck. We saw the Intel machine sitting about 50 to 60 frames per second, and the AMD machine was just slightly higher at about 60 frames, which is interesting that this is the only game that seemed to be neck to neck. So in our little side by side here, if you are interested in gaming, a AMD machine is definitely gonna be your best bet. And we can see why they're putting some of these mobile AMD CPUs and GPUs in gaming handhelds, for example, such as the Steam Deck. While the Intel machine did do pretty good, if you're looking for just a stable desktop machine to do light workloads, or if you're looking to use a mini PC for something like a media server, I still recommend Intel machines because quick sync on these things is absolutely fantastic. So with all that, what do you think? Are you gonna go AMD or Intel when it comes to your next PC purchase, whether that be a laptop, mini PC, or full-fledged desktop computer? Earlier I mentioned the new 7000 series of AMD machines. I just got one in, so I'm really looking forward to trying that out. But with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day, and good bye.